Hello everybody out there in the book verse, it's Stephanie and welcome to the start of my vlogging for Bookopolathon. I am really, really excited to be doing this. I'm a terrible vlogger, everyone knows it, it's just a fact, but I have decided that I'm gonna do it this month. It's gonna happen, I'm gonna vlog everything for Bookopolathon. Well, not everything, but enough that you know what's going on and you can see that I have finished the books that I decided I was going to read. So I am going to be starting with Tithe. This one came up when I had to play someone else's TBR game. I played Gavin's from How to Train Your Gavin and I lost. So I had to read a book that I didn't really want to read, which is Tithe by Holly Black. This is a, uh, I think, fey romance story. It is an urban paranormal fantasy and I really don't know exactly what to expect from this except I don't have super high expectations. Obviously I didn't really want to read it so it's not something that I'm expecting to be absolutely amazing but I'm gonna start with it because it's kind of short and I feel like it'll boost my confidence for the readathon that I'll be able to finish because I will finish a book rather quickly. Hopefully if I finish this one slowly though it's definitely going to drop my confidence level so we will see how this goes. But at the same time, I'm also going to be reading uh, Blood of Elves. This is actually the last, wish, which is the last Wish, which is the collection of short stories that comes before Blood of Elves. Blood of the Elves is the first book in the novels of the Witcher series, and these follow a man named Geralt. He's a witcher who kind of goes about and gets paid to solve other people's magical creature or spell or whatever problems that they have going on in their area. A lot of times he'll just travel around, find people that have problems that he needs to solve, and he'll go out and like either kill the creature or remove it or fix it or something they'll pay him and that's his job. I don't really know what to expect from the novels because the short stories just kind of jump around to different jobs that he had taken different like adventures that he had and it was fun but I didn't really love the short story format of it. I don't tend to love short stories in general. I don't like those types of books but I have high hopes that the novels are going to be better. I'm really, really excited to jump into those. So yeah, I am pretty pumped to start this readathon and I will let you guys know how it goes. I have a really busy week coming up, so I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done, which is why I started with two relatively shorter books. I'm going to be reading Blood of Elves on my phone, which is why I don't have the physical copy. I'll be doing some like ebook, some audiobook, and switching a little bit back and forth between those. So yeah. Is anyone else so excited for this readathon? <laughs> hey, so it's now Thursday, which means we have been doing this readathon for a few days now, and I feel like I've been making okay, decent progress. I haven't been absolutely killing it like I was hoping to, but it's been going pretty well. I am still making progress in Tithe. I took the cover off because I am going on a trip this weekend, and I do not like to take the dust jackets with me. I just don't like when they get messed up and stuff and so I just don't take the dust jackets. I just take them without them on my trips. But I feel like this book is kind of, it just seems fairly juvenile. It's definitely <laughs> towards the way younger end of YA. It's kind of, I don't know if you've ever read Amelia Rodder Rhodes books, but if you have, it reminds me very, very much of her books like um, Midnight Predator and In the Forest of the Night and those type of types of books, those vampire paranormal romance books. And this is pretty much along those exact same lines, except it is a fey romance book. So, I mean, I kind of knew that going into it. Once I started reading a little bit, it felt so much like that, that I knew what it was going to be. It's not that it's a bad book necessarily. It's just not high quality and it's not something that I think is absolutely amazing. It's just kind of a like a chill read, something that I can get through quickly and just kind of like enjoy it for what it is. And I think that's something you got to really keep in mind when you're reading this book is you have to just take it for what it is, not really expect anything deep or profound or amazing from this book. So far, the main character is kind of entertaining, which I like. I feel like a lot of times in these books when they try to make the girl not like other girls, it makes them um, into characters that I really don't enjoy reading about. But I think that she has done fairly well. She's quirky in a fun way. And she's just like, 
fun, different, kind of weird, different, not, oh, I'm so broody and artistic and people don't get me and I'm so different and dark and gothy. And I'm, that's not how she is in this. So I do like that. I think that not like other girls girl was done fairly well in this book. So that's something I'm very grateful for. Otherwise, I probably couldn't stand it. But I'm also not that into the love interest necessarily. I feel like the romance doesn't have a lot of ground to stand on yet. Granted, I still do have 100 pages left. So we'll see where that goes. But you know that this romance is coming. So I just hope that it's done well. I don't have a huge hopes on that, honestly, though, because I don't like the Cruel Prince series. And that one people love the romance in and I just absolutely hated it. So we'll see. I don't like a couple of them side characters. They're not the type of characters that I enjoy. So that's kind of frustrating. The writing style is very simplistic and it has kind of an over the top use of metaphors, which I don't tend to enjoy. But like I said, I don't have high expectations. So I'm just kind of reading it for what it is. And I will be taking this with me and hopefully finishing it on my trip. So this weekend, I actually have a wedding that I am a bridesmaid in and that's going to be tomorrow, which I'm really, really excited about. It'll be really fun. That's here in the state I live in in Utah. And then after that, I'm going to be flying down to Kentucky to visit my sister. She lives down there. So I'm going to be visiting my sister and her boyfriend and my niece down in Kentucky. And I'm really excited. This is the first time I've flown since COVID. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, it's okay. And yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I don't know how much reading I'll get done while I'm down there because I'll just want to be spending time with them and hanging out. And I don't know if I'll actually vlog at all while I'm down there. I don't know. But we will see. Also, the other book that I'm going to be taking, and I know I keep holding up Last Wish for Blood of Elves, but that's because I'm reading it on my phone. So I don't actually have Blood of Elves. I probably will end up buying it since I'm continuing with this series though. So I have all the books in the series. It'll be kind of weird to have all of them, but Blood of Elves. But I am actually a good chunk of the way through this. I think I'm about halfway. I'm putting this down because that's not what I'm reading. I'm about halfway through Blood of Elves. I'll put the actual picture up. And I'm liking it. I don't know if I like the writing style of the book. I feel like the author jumps to weird points of view and I'm just not getting enough of the characters that I really like. I would love to just be all Geralt, Siri, and Dandelion or however you say his name. It looks like Dandelion, so that's how I say it. And I just don't get as much of that as I would have hoped or expected. There's a lot of weird points of views that they throw in there that I don't care about as much. We'll see how it goes. I also feel like we don't really understand a lot of things, and I don't know if it's because the magic system in here isn't as firm and concrete as in some other books, or if it's just secret and we don't know about it, because I do feel like a lot of the things that happen magically, we don't have a lot of explanation for and we don't really understand the magic system that much. I also feel like the political intrigue in here is not done that well. I am not really that aware of what players are involved, like what everyone's going for. I just think it could be explained a lot better so that we understood it more thoroughly. I Again, I'm only halfway through the book, so there could be a lot of changes. I am really loving Siri in this book. I think she is an amazing character and she is so much fun. And I'm liking the kind of dark atmosphere the book has going on. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out who's the bad guys, who they're working for, who we can't trust, because I don't know who we can trust in here. It feels like anyone could be betraying us and we just don't know. So those things are really fun. It's very engaging in that sense. I just feel like jumping between points of view the way that it does really detaches me from the story. So I'm struggling with that a little bit but maybe throughout the rest of the book that'll improve. I don't know. I'm going to be taking that with me as well, obviously, because I'm taking my phone and hopefully I'll get some of that reading done, at least on the plane. I might be kind of tired though, because the wedding is Friday night and then we fly out at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. So we're going to have to get up at probably four, probably not going to get home till after midnight for sure. So I'm definitely going to be tired. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done, but I'm really excited for this. And I think... It's gonna be a lot of fun to go on a trip, even though it's in the middle of this readathon that I definitely want to be successful at, but we will do see how it goes.
to close out my vlog. I'm really excited that I vlogged decently well for this week. Actually, it's been a little over a week. Today is actually Thursday. So I got back from my trip to Kentucky yesterday night. It was probably around 9.30 or so when I got home, 9.30 or 10, and I just didn't really want to film at that point. I was pretty tired and I had to go to sleep fairly early because I had to work today. But I did take a little bit of footage while I was on my trip, which was super fun. I didn't really film me talking about my books and what I was reading while I was there. So I figured I would just fill you all in while I was here. I didn't get any footage at the wedding. I felt a little odd because it wasn't my wedding, so I didn't know if it, so I didn't really feel like I should film there. But I did do a little bit on my trip and showed you some of the fun things that we did. It was amazing. I had so much fun just hanging out and being with them, being with everybody. And we did end up going to two different bookstores, which I loved, which was awesome because my niece, even was like, we have to go to this bookstore that we went to last time you came, we have to go get more books. And she picked out two books and one of them was Wondersmith, which is the um, sequel to Nevermore. And I'm so excited that she likes those books because I absolutely love them. Reading wise, I did pretty decently while I was there, considering that I was pretty much just spending time with my family the whole time. I did end up finishing Tithe, it was pretty much just what I expected. The romance was a little rushed, didn't have a huge foundation to it, which is understandable considering it's super short and it's kind of just a very simple romance story. The writing was very simplistic. It was extremely predictable. You could see pretty much everything coming from a mile off, but it was okay. It wasn't anything amazing. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read, so. It was, and it has fulfilled one of my seven prompts for Becky, Becca's book Oplathon, so I am really excited about that one book down. And I also finished Blood of Elves by Andrea Sapkowski, which was disappointing, honestly. I had really high expectations for that book, and it let me down, for sure. I feel like the weird point of views that we got in that book just threw me completely off, pulled me out of the story, and I was not as invested. I feel like the point when he was focusing on some of the political leaders and they just talked politics and talked about different countries and different cities and different people and different passes and roots or whatever was extremely confusing to me. I only got a little portion of that when they were talking about people that we actually knew who they were. And the rest of it was just so over my head that I felt really overwhelmed thinking maybe I was going to need to know all these things. Maybe I still do. I don't know. But I thought that that was a part of the book that really turned me off to it. It made me feel like I had no idea what was going on. Maybe I hadn't been paying attention, but I just didn't feel like there was enough foundation laid for the politics that were going on in here. I know it's a fairly long series, so hopefully a little bit more will be done. But yeah, it wasn't my favorite book. I think I, I think I'll still give it a three stars. I like the world and I really like our main characters of Geralt, Ciri, and Dandelion, the main three POVs and any other POVs that we got. A lot of times were just one-offs 
that really weren't that important to the story. I had issues that, with that book, but I still did really enjoy the main characters when we were with them. I thought there was a lot of a character development done with Siri in this book. She was very much a focus of it, which I thought was great and awesome because she is such a fun character. She's funny. She's just like tough and cute and I really liked her, but I did feel like she still seemed like a little kid when she was like 15. So that was a little weird to me. <laughs> I don't know. So that fulfilled my prompt for an ebook or an audiobook. So two down out of seven. Ah, I feel like I'm doing very well. Probably not as well as I think, and I'm going to crash. But I have also started two other books, so that's great. I am actually about 150 pages into Spindle's End, which is my prompt for a friend pick. I had my sister pick this one out for me, and it is adorable. Oh my goodness, I love this. It has such a magical fairy tale esque feel to it. It has fairies, it has a princess, it's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, and it is really adorable and I love it. In this book, the evil fairy comes and casts this like spell on the princess saying that she's going to prick her finger on a spinning wheel and die uh, on her 21st birthday or by her 21st birthday. Instead of them picking the fairy godmothers to take her away, this random fairy that was there that uh, went and saved her for some reason. I don't know. We haven't really got that ends up being the one who takes her and is raising her in secret in her village. I just think it is so random. There's so much randomness that makes it cute and whimsical that I absolutely love. That reminds me a lot of how middle grade magic works and it has really sweet characters in it. Uh, it just makes you love them. It makes you love so many of these people in this book and I'm already in love with like 10 people in here. So I am really excited to continue reading this one. It's a pretty quick read and I'm really enjoying myself so far. The other book that I started is The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is the second book in the Wheel of Time series, the first one being The Eye of the World. I'm about 100 pages into this so I really haven't gotten into the meat of the story too much, but it's really hard to describe what's going on in this book without spoiling things from the first book. This is a high epic fantasy series and we are following a a huge cast of characters as they are trying to prevent the dark one, the forces of the dark one, from taking over the world and destroying it. And there's supposed to be someone from a prophecy who comes back as the dragon reborn, who is a man who can wield magic and will save the world. Because usually when men wield magic, they go insane and cause much destruction. And women are able to wield magic without going insane. And they are the ones that kind of prevent these men from destroying the world. It's really interesting. The world is very complex. We're still learning more about it as we go. The politics in it are interesting. I feel like there are a lot of similarities to a lot of other fantasy books. So it does feel very much like a classic high fantasy book, which I am really, really enjoying. I love it. It is fairly slow paced, but that's something I don't really mind in my fantasy books. I do tend to enjoy that. I like the character development and the world development and a little bit more time spent with those types of things. But yeah, so far, so good. I am enjoying it. I don't have any complaints right now. I think we're getting a lot into characters that are going to play a little bit more of a role. We're starting to see some of the plots that are going on behind the scenes and some of the things that our characters are probably going to have to deal with, and I'm really liking it. Okay, so that is the end of my first vlog for Becca's Book Oplathon. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're doing so far. If you have a video vlogging your time doing Becca's Book Oplathon, please let me know down below so I can go check it out. I am really excited about this readathon. I think it's a very creative and fun one. So yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.